Critical design is a new and upcoming term in the design world. But what exactly is it? Where does it come from? And does it work? And why is it that you may have never even heard of it before? The term critical design was first mentioned in Anthony Toon's book, Heads and Tales, in 1999. It's now popularized by Anthony June and Fiona Rabbi, who use designed artifacts to comment on the consumer culture. Both the designed artifact as the process of designing one causes a reflection on existing values, morals and certain habits in the culture. Besides Rabbi and June, there are a few other designers who make critical design such as Jürgen Bay and Martin Guiche, but there may even be people who are doing this kind of work but have never heard of the term critical design. Design as critic is not a new idea. For example, Italian radical design of the 1960s and 70s were highly critical of prevailing social values and design ideologies. Artium was an architectural studio founded in 1966 in Florence, Italy. Their objects acted as ironic post-functionalist commentaries on the modern movement. The Mies chair of 1969 with the elastic seat commented on the inadequacies of the modernist aesthetics. Critical design as a way of criticizing the way we are, the way we react and the way we live. It takes a different perspective from what we consider normal and tries to make us realize what we're doing. How does this all match with reality? Do the critical designs and concepts work as they should? Are there enough people who are really aware of critical design? A select group of art lovers who visit the proud exhibitions of critical design may be, but if the destiny of critical design is in a museum, shouldn't it then be called critical art? Somehow the world sees it as design, so we call it that. Usually, design has a market and is reachable for everyone. But as far as we know, critical design doesn't really have a market. Quite confusing. Maybe it's all just another joke, and should we consider it as entertainment for the bored moments in life? Yet, somehow, every joke contains a certain deeper truth. Think of what it could do if it had a market and everyone could reach it. Imagine what the world would look like. Anthony June designed the teddy blood bag, which is a radio fueled by blood, kept in a cute teddy bear shaped pouch. It's not a very positive and bright vision of the future. The exhibition where the radio is shown is aimed at children between the ages of 7 and 12. Anthony June wanted to show that often reality is stranger than fiction. In this case, he wanted children to think about ethics. Where would the blood come from? Blood bags might have to be made in friendly shapes to make them less scary, so they can be placed in children's hospitals. But they will also make you aware of the fact that this blood must have come from another living body. Evidence dolls are hypothetical products sold in a fictional shopping mall called Bioland. The project consists of 100 specially designed dolls used to provoke discussion amongst a group of young single women about the impact of genetic technology on their lifestyle. The dolls come in three versions based on penis size. A black marker allows women to note down interesting characteristics of their lover. Hair, toenail clippings and sperm can be collected and stored in the penis roll. But what would happen if Violet really existed and actually sold these dolls? Would singles use them and would there be a female doll for a single man? It would really make you think twice if you see one of these dolls in the window on your one night stand, especially for you. Basically, critical design can go two ways. It could stay in museums, or it could take its way to the consumer, you and me. What future will it have, and what does that mean? What will the world look like? If it stays in museums, there will be a small group of people whom it might change. Would the name change to critical art? Or maybe, eventually, just art? Or will it find its way to a large public? Will we be able to buy it, own it, and show it to others? Shop windows will turn into small exhibitions. It will be seen everywhere. Eventually, it might even be banned. At least, it would bring the debate to a larger public.